Pride. Brought to you by Golf Pride. Good morning and welcome into Morning Drive. Happy Friday. It is great to have you with us. Anna Whiteley with you. Delighted to welcome in the team Damon Hack, Paige McKenzie, Robert Dameron, and I'm very pleased to say we've also got Lauren Thompson with us this morning. LT, it's so good to see you. Do what you do best, would you, and take us to those Morning Drive headlines. Absolutely. So let's get you caught up on the world of golf. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope it's off to a great start. Diving into those headlines, as promised, let's begin with the PGA Tour champions who announced on Thursday that, yes, they will be combining their 2020 and 2021 seasons, meaning the next Charles Schwab Cup champion will be crowned in November 2021 at the Charles Schwab Cup Championship. 13 tournaments remain on the 2020 PGA Tour champion schedule, beginning with the Ally Challenge. That kicks off July 31st. Now on to the gaming world. We don't get to say that a lot, where Justin Thomas has been revealed as the face of the new PGA Tour 2K21 video game that's set for a multi-platform release come August 21st. And speaking of JT, his first major championship triumph, you may remember it well, came at the 2017 PGA Championship at Quail Hollow. And now the PGA Championship will be heading back to the Charlotte course in 2025. Now, also in the news, the PGA of America has announced that the PGA Championship will be returning to Southern Hills Country Club in 2030 when it will host its record fifth PGA Championship. Now, that course has a very rich history. You might remember a guy by the name of, yeah, Tiger Woods winning there back when it was held in Tulsa in 2007, but turning it over to Robert Dameron. And this is a big question, maybe a little bit tricky, what do you believe is the most iconic PGA Championship venue to date? That is a tricky question because when you think iconic venues and, and some great ones like Southern Hills, you also think of them as U.S. Open courses. So a course that I've picked, I wanted to go a place because the PGA of America also runs the Ryder Cup somewhere that's had a, a Ryder Cup, and that's PGA National. I think it's a fantastic golf course. It's had a couple wonderful finishes in PGA Championships, Jack Nicklaus winning in 71, Larry Nelson beating uh, Lanny Watkins in 87. The 83 Ryder Cup I mentioned uh, was a one-point win for the U.S. I just think we get to see this golf course e each year when they play the Honda there. And, and the difficulty of it and, and, and the fact that now that the PGA Championship is in May, we can hold it again in Florida. Um, it's just such a hard, hard golf course. Who wouldn't want to see... Uh, the bear trap with some May wins in Florida, you know, dictating who wins the PGA Championship, a major late on Sunday. Uh, and Paige, I mean, hell, the name is PGA National. How much better can you get than that for a PGA Championship? <laughs> It's hard to beat that, but I will say I love to watch the bear trap. I don't know if I'd want to play it. Uh, the golf course that I chose as an iconic venue is Oakland Hills, just outside Detroit. And that is a golf course that I have played. And when you walk on the grounds, you feel part of golf history. And my course as well, not just to host the PGA Championship, but also host other great championships as well. Notably, uh, though they have hosted the PGA Championship three times, Patrick Harrington the last winner in 2008, Gary Player also a winner in 1972, and they also hosted a Ryder Cup in 2004. But the history really streams through from Donald Ross, the architect, to Walter Hagen, who was the very first head professional at that golf course, who was also a five-time PGA champion. So a lot of rich history there at Oakland Hills. Fantastic golf course, Paige. I went with Baltusrol, the lower course in New Jersey. Uh, it's the site of Jimmy Walker, who our guest is today. He won in 2016 by one shot over Jason Day. Also, where Phil Mickelson won back in 2005 by one shot over Steve Elkington and Thomas Bjorn. I was covering the event for the New York Times. He famously tapped the Nicholas plaque that sits on the 18th fairway. Uh, that was where you know Nicholas hit a one iron from 238 yards in the 67 U.S. Open. But this was an incredible up and down for birdie. Phil gets his second major championship. I just love this meaty northeast golf course with so much history and where Phil won his second major championship. 
You know, this was a tough question, LT, because there's been some awesome PGA Championship winners over the years, but I've gone sort of along the lines there with Robert Dameron with Ryder Cup venues. I've gone this year's Ryder Cup venue, Whistling Straits, because I will never forget the first time I walked in onto property uh, back in 2015 and just how stunning the views are across Lake Michigan. It's got that linksy sort of feel to it, and I just fell in love with it the, the moment that I saw it. And not only that, but the history, the winners, uh, VJ back in 2000, and for Kaima in 2010 and notably Jason Day as well in 2015. That was a real standout win just because of the pure emotion that went in to that 18th green uh, after he'd won. It was a 20 under par scoring, a major championship record at that time, holding off Jordan Spieth, who was looking for his third major of the year at that point. But these images here, you can just see the relief that came pouring out of his body. Uh, he did it for his family. He did it for everything that he overcame as a child, the sacrifice that his mum gave up. But we all know the story. And for me, that was just a really special moment. So some amazing moments of the PGA. We have got August to look forward to as we head to TPC Harding Park. And I know we're all really looking forward to that.